Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you a very nerdy, very geeky, but a specifically requested video to see my D&D &D stuff. If you are unfamiliar with what D&D &D is, oh that's Lurch behind me by the way getting himself settled, so any snoring you hear or weird sounds, it is Lurch the chunky but beautiful pug behind me. If you are unfamiliar with D&D, &D, it is the tabletop role-playing game Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, it is so much fun. I've been playing for a couple years now, but more recently I've gotten back into a brand new campaign that I am loving and is just so much fun playing a totally fresh and new character, just having a blast. I am gonna be touring my D&D &D journal at the end of this, so if you don't wanna see the extra nerdiness stuff of like my player sheet, um, how I kind of have myself set up and my previous D&D &D notebook and things, you might wanna just skip ahead if you want to or not. Uh, I'll also be showing off my dice and stuff for the current campaign as well. This was a specifically requested video. Like I have gotten a lot of questions uh, and requests of you guys asking to see my D&D &D stuff. So this is it. This is the D&D &D stuff video. Here we go. I'm going to, well, let me organize all this stuff out of the way. And yes, this is a wig over here. We will get to that in a moment. But let me just clear some of this and we'll go through my weekly routine and what I have set up uh, for when I play D&D. Okay, so yes, I do have a wig here. Oh look, I'm getting all ASMR on you here for a second. Uh, I do have a wig here. This is actually for my new D&D character, Rowan. She is a human warlock. Uh, she has pastel pink hair, so I thought it'd be fun for this campaign to buy a wig. While playing, I've only worn it once, <laughs> so I do need to wear it more, but it's actually pretty cute and very comfortable. But I keep it with my D&D stuff for when I'm feeling in the mood and I wanna get a little bit more into character, then I put my little pink wig on. I've done this in the past, to the last character that I played, which I'll talk about briefly when I talk about this. The last character that I played was a tiefling barbarian, so she was like a giant demon woman, and I did have little devil horns that I would wear on a weekly basis along with a velvet cloak. Um, I definitely need to get a cloak for my new character, but it's fun sometimes to have little accessories that just kind of help put you in the mood when you're sitting down to play a new session. So when it comes to books, um, and I did just want to share this, this was from my last campaign, but I kind of want to talk about that as I get into my new D&D &D sketchbook situation. But when it comes to books, obviously we have the player's handbook, which is a must for any D&D &D player. You need to have your own copy and you need to go through and add an obsessive amount of tabs. So obviously we have a tab for every race um, and every class. And then we also have tabs, and I say we because James and I play together, obviously. So we share this book. And then we've gone through and we've added just some extra tabs that are a little bit helpful with things, including specific um, spell areas for different classes. We have character extras, and then we have kind of some other important things um, specific to either characters that we're playing or like feats. Like feats was always a section we kind of needed to come to a lot, so that is something that we have bookmarked. But having your player's handbook bookmarked like this is very helpful, um, unless you are a D&D pro uh, cough, cough, I'm talking to Hollis, my D&D &D sorority sister. I swear to God, she knows this book like cover to cover and could probably tell you specific page numbers. It's crazy. But if you are still kind of a D&D &D noob, marking your pages can be incredibly helpful. Something else that we like to have is Xanathar's, uh, Xanathar's Guide to Everything because there are some nice updates in here, some different spells and feats and whatnot. So we do reference this from time to time. Um, and especially when creating a new character, this was especially helpful. Uh, I have not gotten Tasha's book yet. The Tasha, whatever the full title is. I've not gotten the Tasha book yet. I do want to because I've heard it's pretty amazing and I secretly want to get it even just for the cover art alone because the cover art seems pretty awesome. Also part of just regular D&D &D stuff, we do have a D&D &D arcane spellbook card set, which is really helpful. Um, I know that there are some really great spellbook options or spellbook card options rather on Etsy where you can kind of print your own. I know I have a couple of bookmarks that are like really fun designs, but for ease and just to have them, we went ahead and got the big batch of Arcane Spellbook cards, which is super helpful. Uh, we go through and pull out whatever spell cards we need and then kind of keep them with us. I know James keeps his spell cards in his dice box, or at least he did, he's not he's not playing a spellcaster in this campaign, but, and I keep mine in my player sheet, which I will get to in a moment. But before that, I wanna talk about the last campaign. So the previous campaign that we had that we played for, literally years, I think it was, oh my gosh, well, 
I played in it for, I think, going on two years, but then I got pregnant and I kind of had to tap out because the sessions were becoming too long. So James and I kind of had to bail on the last little bit of the campaign there, but I still actually think the campaign is technically not over, which is insane to say. But this was my main notebook for that campaign. And it was Helena was the character that I played, a tiefling barbarian. She was a uh, very sexually feisty and uh, bloodthirsty and just all out crazy with a evil chaotic alignment. She was a blast to play, but a little bit crazy. Actually, I have my player sheet in here, which I really want to frame this because it's been through so much. Um, I always like to put my kills at the top of our player sheet. Uh, mine is in pencil for the most part. I'm not a crazy person who commits to their player sheet in pen. Props to those who do. And then I'm a big fan of using post-its. This was a huge trick from my D&D &D friends and our DM. And I can't take full credit for a lot of this stuff either by the way a lot of this came from you know our, our amazing dm colin and the rest of our dnd crew who is just like absolutely magical but anyways the, using post-its can be incredibly helpful both for your xp points updating them because obviously if you're playing a character for years your player sheet is really going to take a beating so i like to use that for things and especially for stuff like this where as a barbarian you have a certain number of rages or maybe it's spell slots i know i need to do this on my new character with spell slots, but this was always really helpful to just have this in pen and once it got worn down, I would put on a new post-it and it'd be fine. Everything else I always had in pencil so that I could quickly see or make adjustments or what have you. This was Helena. Oh, good times. And then I had extra notes on the back for just kind of physical descriptions and things that I had collected or stolen, all sorts of interesting things. My couple of spells that I did have as a tiefling, not a lot. And then a random thing that I had gotten during the campaign. So that was my player sheet. And then this was my notebook that I used for the campaign. Now you'll see most of it was writing, but there were times where I would illustrate things. I would doodle things with whatever pen I was using, or I'd bring like a paint pen and something else. This is literally just a paint pen, a colored pencil and a brush pen. But I found myself kind of doing this a lot where I was doodling things. And I, it, it's what inspired me for this new campaign. And I kind of always knew back then when I was filling this out, I was kind of like, why, why didn't I do like a sketchbook thing? That would have been so much cooler. Next campaign, I'm going to do it. That's what I've done now for our new campaign is that I've created my D and D it's technically a sketchbook, but it's really more of a journal. So I need to call it my D and D journal because that's ultimately what it is so that it's a place for me to take notes. Because again, if you're new to D and D taking notes is a huge part of it. A lot of stuff happens. You get a lot of information. Sometimes you need to refer back to things. Um, but you can see, I really went crazy with kind of the illustration part and I really enjoyed it. Oh, I forgot about this. Oh, see, and I love like flipping it open and looking at it too. It's so fun. I actually kind of like the ballpoint pen look too. Maybe I should try a couple pages like that in my new one. But I always knew that I wanted to do something a little bit more all out than just this. And that wasn't just on lined paper. So that is what I've done now with our new campaign. And I'll show you that in a little bit. But I just wanted to flash back and kind of show you like where that sort of came from. Yeah, most of it is handwriting. And you could see where I was getting kind of tired towards the end too but it was always fun when I did take the time to draw things to, to do it. I really enjoyed it. And then I have the cover, of course, which I never finished. I watercolored or I used, oh, was this ink or no, this was ink. This was either ink or maybe it's the liquid, it might be the liquid acrylic from uh, Golden. Actually, I think that's what that is. And then I just kind of created a splotchy cover and you can see where I have more stuff sketched in on here. And I was slowly inking it with um, a detail brush and then I just never finished, never finished it. So it will live unfinished like this forever. But yeah, that is my old book that I will save forever. I do need to really frame that player's sheet at some point because it is just like so, so special. Real quick, here are my dice. I have a crap load of dice. Like I, like this is just a sprinkling of dice that I have. I'm kind of a hoarder of dice. It's it's definitely a problem. I yeah, I, ugh, I have so much. It's too many. Like that's the one thing with D&D that's just like so much fun is the collecting of the dice when you really don't need that many. So I have way more than what is beyond in this box is what I am trying to get at. And if you want a dice tour, let me know in the comments and I will film a beautiful 
full collection dice tour if you're up for it. But what I like to do is curate dice specific to the character that I'm playing. It really helps kind of put you in the mood. And there's always like certain visual things that you can very easily pair dice to characters with, if that makes any sense. So for Helena, I had these sort of bone colored dice that were splattered in blood. I used a lot of black dice, reds, uh, you know, bloodthirsty, demony looking dice. But for this particular character as a human warlock, she's very pastel goth. She's got a lot of pinks and purples. She's a little sparkly, but she wears all black. But the, the pastel sparkle is, is there underneath. So the dice that I've curated for Rowan, that is her name, and this was a box that was actually part of a like fancy deck of cards that I got from LACMA, but the box is perfect for dice. So I have saved it, I've put some D20 stickers on it, and just have used this as my dice box for quite some time now. I used this for Helena, and now I'm using it for Rowan, but of course I rotated some of the dice out. So currently I have, let's see, five sets of dice in here um, that kind of fit for Rowan. Obviously, I'll probably rotate some out at some point, or buy new ones, I don't know, but this is the current batch. I love these purple ones. These were, I think these were purchased off Amazon. You'd be amazed at, at the dice sets that you can get off of Amazon. It's pretty amazing, but it's like a faux amethyst rock sort of dice and you can get actual like, um, is this ameth amethyst? Is this what I'm thinking of? There's a stone that looks like this. You know what I'm talking about. You can get actual stuff that is made out of the real rock and stone off Etsy, but it's so, so insanely expensive, it's crazy. But I think these were off of Amazon, I think. I can't entirely remember, but you'd be amazed at what you can find on Amazon. This set here, these pinky ones, this is so Rowan to me, like, very pastel pink with like a hint of sparkle. This to me just really embodies my character and I love the kind of gold detail. These were purchased, I believe, from Kraken Dice, which is one of my favorite places to buy dice. It's a small, um, small shop. Well, I think they're pretty big now, but they're based in San Diego, I believe, like a little family-run dice place, but now they've gotten pretty big. But um, yeah, this was from Kraken Dice. I'm pretty, pretty positive. This was one of the first sets that I bought to play with Rowan um, that I had before I started playing. And I've been holding on to these pink dice for such a long, long time. So it was really fun to finally like bust those out and start playing with them. This crazy neon set, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. And I, I know James got one as well, or he at least got a D20. I picked these up at Comic-Con a few years ago and it was like such a fun find. And I think I found like a D20 or something in a giant like bargain bin and fell in love with it so much that I was like, no, I need the whole, I need the whole set. Cause it's just so crazy weird. And if you look up close, it has kind of like a liquidy, sort of look on the inside so it's not even like it's a solid neon it has a really fun kind of texture inside of it paired with like the turquoise numbers Ugh, obsessed definitely one of my favorite favorite sets i think i even played with those when i was playing as helena as well this is a newer set that i got that was also just kind of fitting for Rowan. I actually think I got these the day that we were playing the first session of our campaign. And I felt that these were really Rowan-esque because it has kind of the black, the clear, and then there is a little bit of a purple kind of glitter to them. And it just feels very warlocky. If you know about warlocks or if you've played a warlock, it just has that kind of vibe to it. Um, these I picked up at my local comic book uh, D is it a D it's not really a D&D &D shop. I don't know what you would call it. I got this at Emerald Knights, basically our local local shop, so I wanted to support them and not walk out of the store empty-handed, especially during COVID times, so I picked up a little set of dice to add to my collection. This last little pinky set, I know it looks sort of similar to this, but it's it's different. <laughs> That's like the story of my life with dice. But no, these ones are so different. They're not like the other ones. These ones are more like pearlescent, I guess you could say. They have um, kind of like a holographic pinky purple shimmer to the inside of them. And then um, the same kind of gold lettering, but just the color themselves on the inside is a little bit different. They're a little bit more sparkly. And this was a birthday gift from James, uh, again, in preparation for playing 
Rowan. Actually, I think I was already playing Rowan at that time, but he bought these for me for my birthday. So I'm not really sure where they're from. Probably Amazon, if I had a guess. So that is my current dice collection for Rowan, but let's get into the good stuff now and check out my D&D journal. Okay, so I'm opening up to the first page because my white balance is gonna hate all of this. So I have to just at least open it up to start here. But I also keep my player's sheet in here. So this is my new one for the new campaign. And I always put a sheet protector on it because it's just helpful. I can just kind of chuck it anywhere and it's not gonna be, you know, an issue of it getting destroyed or mangled in a book, which is really nice. And then I also keep my spell cards inside of there as well. So that's kind of an easy storage thing or, you know, like what James and probably a lot of people do too, they put it in their dice box, but it's helpful to have them pulled out of the spell card deck and then I can use them as need be. Um, so I have my cantrips, this is out of order, my cantrips and then my three spells as well. So I kind of just keep that there. Obviously this is a very new character, so very much level one, still working on all that good stuff. But uh, so far it's been fun playing a spellcaster. It's my first time, it's kind of, kind of wild. So here on the first page of my D&D journal, I just, and again, this is going to be very different than some of the other things that I have maybe shared with you or that I work in. It's very much a free flowing, like putting random things in here. It's for notes. It's for scraps. It's for, it's just like my fun play place for all things D&D and this specific campaign. I've left the space here for a campaign cover page of some sort. This was the initial letter that we received from our DM to basically, it was the invitation to the campaign. I am adding stickers in here, much like I do my other sketchbooks and things. And I have themed all of the stickers to things that would be appropriate to Rowan the character. So a lot of the stuff in here, you're gonna see a lot of pinks, you're gonna see a lot of pastels, stuff that you normally probably wouldn't see from my work, but it is all, again, for my character. So I'm gonna go through this pretty quickly here. I have a more in-depth sort of flip through um, on Patreon if you wanna kinda check that out where I'm kinda talking a little bit more through things, but I just kinda wanted to do a quick flip. This was me attempting to illustrate my character. Definitely wanna redo that. This is just a quick flip of me just kind of showing you just really quickly kind of really how I use this and you'll definitely start to see kind of photos of things as well on my Instagram. These are just some reference pages that I still need to kind of come in and finish. Uh, stuff that I'm sewing on my cloak, that's part of my character. I've talked about this in an Ink With Me video on the channel, you can just check out that. Uh, stuff that my character has gathered that is there. And then this is where we get into basically the session pages. So I am taking notes during the session, I'm sketching things, and then sometimes I just leave blank spaces for things and I'll make note of like, hey, draw XYZ here, and then I will come back and kind of fill it back in when I have time. Because obviously every D&D session is a little bit different. Sometimes there's a lot going on and I need to take a lot more notes. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to draw. Sometimes I'm not in the mood to get all crazy and decorative. So it really just kind of depends. Like this was a perfect example. I was taking a lot more notes here. I kind of had just sketched out a header and then I just made a note to myself of what I wanted to kind of illustrate down here at the bottom. And then I came back later and filled it in and, and got it all gussied up. So if you actually want to watch me illustrate this, you can uh, watch the D&D Journal With Me video over on Patreon. This of course was the last page, which you've seen glimpses of in the vlog. So you've definitely seen me kind of working on these gross little bone crawlers in here. Um, but that was actually a lot of fun to illustrate. And I had a really good time too with the, the header on this, making it look like kind of little worms. So that was really Really a good time, but I'm slowly settling into this guy here, taking notes, creating those kind of session pages, really just kind of making it my own and, and also a functional but creative space to have fun while playing D&D. All right, guys, so there you have it. It was just a quick little tour of all of my D&D &D stuff, and I'm sure you'll catch a lot more of it in the vlogs or, oh, actually, maybe not because I do. I do weekend vlogs on Patreon, sorry, and I play on weekends. Uh, you'll see more probably on Instagram where I post, um, I'm starting to post more of the illustrations and stuff from out of my D&D journal there. So as I finish stuff, I will, you know, share across social media somewhere, but I wanted to at least give a little bit of a tour of my dice and kind of just my my setup for this new campaign since so many of you requested to see it. So I hope this was a fun video, uh, a nice little change of pace around here. Um, if you have any questions for me, leave it for me in the comments below. Or if you wanna see a full mega dice tour, also let me know on that and I can make that video for you. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe for more creative, nerdy, <laughs> 
creepy, cute content. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!